And now, from your local election headquarters, the only locally produced political talk show discussing the issues that matter to you. This is Big Country Politics on KTAB. Thank you for being here for this week's edition of Big Country Politics. I'm Victor Sotelo. We start with what's making political headlines across the nation, state, and the big country. And first, Abilene's Hispanic Leadership Council is brainstorming the best ways to make sure every resident in Abilene is counted in the 2020 census. Our Mercedes Hernandez was at a meeting to learn how the group is going to do that and, how, and has more in your eye on Abilene. Members from all facets of life in the key city met Tuesday evening for some census strategy. The thing about it is a lot of the times it's by word of mouth. All we have to say is something and it just spreads like wildfire. The Hispanic Leadership Council, made up of educators, media professionals, business owners and more, is making a grassroots plan to get underreported areas of Abilene counted in the 2020 census. But remember, the undercount is not just about Hispanics, it's about zero to five, it's about college students, it's about disabled people, it's about the homeless. The council, along with help from local professors, is applying for a grant to fund their efforts. They used Tuesday's meeting to outline a tentative budget to send along with their application, which is due in a little less than two weeks. We're probably around the $30,000 figure right now. Council members say they only found out about the grant about a week ago, but some, like Monica Diaz, are feeling confident about the ground they've covered in just a couple meetings. Well, At first I was, oh my gosh, what am I getting myself into it? But now that I, I really understand the process and the importance of the funding. It will be November when the council finds out if it was awarded the grant and if it gets it, members are in for several months of work until census day in April. However, that's a task members say they're ready for. Everybody has a voice and everybody needs to be counted for. In Abilene with coverage you can count on. Mercedes Hernandez, KTAB News. And Census Day is April 1st, 2020. And for more information, you can visit the article on BigCountryHomepage.com. All right, it's been coming for a few years now. New water meters in the city of Abilene. The plans to bring water measurement into the digital age by removing the older and possibly inaccurate analog meters. KTAB City reporter Nathan Grieve got the details as the first meters are being installed. You probably won't even notice a change. In a matter of minutes, your water meter has been swapped out. It's happening now, and after a while, it'll have happened everywhere in Abilene. We are very excited to have a kickoff of the water meter replacement program. We've talked about this uh, publicly for a long time. I know uh, people are probably tired of hearing about talk and no action. Well, we're ready to bring action uh, out beginning today. And here we are, the first of the new meters ready for action. Our contractors state that they should be able to do approximately 200 meters a day. With around 40,000 to get through, they've got their work cut out for them, split into different districts, which you can find on your water bill. And once you've got the new meter, you've got some new info at your disposal. They will have the ability um, to be able to see their usage in real time so that if there were ever any questions about um, high bills or any water leaks or things of that nature, they'll be able to monitor that very closely. There are plenty of resources on the city website to help prep you for the change, even if you don't catch it happening. In Abilene, with coverage you can count on, Nathan Grieve, KTAB News. And the new meters are supposed to last 20 years and are supposed to be more accurate than the old analog meters being used now. Well, it seems like every day there's a new story on vaping related illnesses making headlines. And right now, one of those stories is close to home. An Abilene woman says she is thankful to be alive, hospitalized for two months, but she's better now and able to speak with KTAB's Claire Kreitz. There's so many people are doing it. They're all okay. Everything's fine. And and then you're not. Cherie Canada was never a smoker, but tried out the new craze, e-cigarettes, and just one puff. I just got addicted to, to the flavors and the nicotine, and I liked it. Leading to three years of vaping. But this summer, that all changed. I got really sick. I thought it was 
just the flu or the stomach virus or dehydration. According to Susan McQuaid, registered respiratory therapist at Hendrick Medical Center, these symptoms? Very hard coughing. Some of them have said they're coughing to the point of throwing up, chest pain, and extreme shortness of breath. While could be flu related, are also indicators of lung illness linked to vaping. When you think about lung tissue, it's very delicate, so any kind of chemical inhaled can produce lifelong changes to the lungs. But with so much still unknown about the effects of e-cigarettes, Canada was first diagnosed with pre-pneumonia. It wasn't until a few weeks later and a trip to the Hendrick Medical Center ER that doctors found clots and fluid filling her lungs. I can't, I can't fight any longer, I can't breathe. My heart was just racing out of my chest. I just, I couldn't breathe anymore. I just wanted to give up. After four days in ICU, Cherie was intubated and put on a medically induced coma. And I was praying and hoping that I woke up. And when she did? I saw everyone and I was getting up to walk. I knew from that point I was a changed person. I was never going to take advantage of my lungs again. I'd never inhale another thing in my life. <laughs> Fighting her way back. You make it to the sun, it's a guns up. If you don't, it's a hook em horn. With a little motivation. <laughs> Cherie is now hoping to spread awareness about the dangers of vaping. I believe I was given a second chance for a reason. Because many health professionals say. We don't know what the long-term effects are going to be, but we're seeing more and more cases every day. There are people dying from it, so we have to take it serious. This is just the beginning. In Abilene, with coverage you can count on, Claire Kreitz, K-Time News. And Canada is now going to school to become a nurse, a passion she decided to pursue after her hospital stay. Watch Sherry's full interview on KTAB's website at BigCountryHomepage.com. Instead of come here on Big Country Politics, we're getting to know two of the newest judges in Taylor County. Sworn in this month, they're trying to tackle the large caseload in family court due to CPS cases. We're back in two minutes. <laughs>